Well, it was a beautiful day out, so I went back out to the hangar and continued working on uh, mounting that nose to the spar. And so you can see here, uh, I've got a view from the inside uh, where I'm going through and I'm doing each of the rivets uh, and, and putting the skin uh, of the nose onto the spar. Real easy, uh, nothing challenging, especially since you have access. Uh, that made it really nice. But uh, yeah, it uh, it's one of those things where uh, lots of rivets and you just do it over and over again. Nothing magical or special on this side. The other side is going to be a bit more of a problem. Uh, see, the, the issue is it's just, it's a wing. <laughs> and there's only so much access you have and then you're just kind of SOL. But I'll get to that in a second. First, I thought I'd show you a little tip and trick on how I'm doing this uh, squeezer thing, because if you're not careful, the squeezer will kind of slide around on you. So something I want to show you guys is how I go about doing uh, a little, little trick I noticed with the squeezer. And that is that the squeezer, when you're, when you're doing these rivets, and you're, you're running along here, it's very easy to, when you push this button, to kind of slide, right? And if you slide around, you're going to mangle your rivet. Uh, one way they get around that is they've got a, a, a replacement that you can do for this button that turns it into, uh, it, it does it all down here, it turns it into a, a foot trigger. I don't have one of those. And so instead, what I've learned to do is put my thumb right here, and, uh, and I'm holding this this piece, this is the, the this bottom piece is the piece that moves, right? And so I hold my thumb against it so that it doesn't slide. So square it up, get it where it needs to go, and it's the only thing that doesn't move, everything else moves, and we have a perfectly set rivet. And so that's what I've learned. One thing you wanna be careful of is with this, uh, this guy right here, when you start this button and you do this throw, it will actually squeeze something down to that thickness and if your finger is in there it's your finger that it's going to squeeze down to that thickness and i have had the misfortune of having a digit between the jaws here uh when i started to squeeze and pinch the holy heck out of me and i could not get off this trigger fast enough uh turned a nail black so uh just be careful when you do do this method of holding it there that you don't inadvertently uh mash yourself because that really hurts um, so yeah, there you go. Pro tips and tricks. All right, to be fair, I'm not sure how pro that was. It is just something I kind of noticed that uh, if you put your thumb down there and you, you use that to hold it in place, the rest of the thing moves, right? The whole thing moves. And if you don't have something to kind of rest that bit against, I don't know what else to call it, um, die, I guess. But if you don't have something to put that against, when you use the thumb trigger, you just can't help it. It just kind of slides left or right a little bit. And originally on the empennage, I had a bunch of pieces that I kind of bent the rivet or it just, it just didn't sit correctly and I had to drill it out. And in fact, there's, I'm probably going to do a whole episode on just things that I'm not satisfied with in the empennage. And I'm going to go back through and show things that, you know, even though this is okay, I'm going to go ahead and remove it or fix it or whatever. And uh, that's something that's coming. Uh, there's going to be a lot of time in between kits and parts, so I'm going to be doing stuff like that. And once I get done with the back side, where you have easy access to all the rivet holes, it's time to do the front side, where you do not have easy access at all. Um, so you can see here that there's just no way uh, from about the second rib all the way to the end to get your arms around it, right? I don't care how long your arms are, you're not going to be able to do it. And so... What you have to do is get somebody to help you or be clever. I chose the clever route. Uh, generally, I think clever is a bad idea, but in this case, it actually worked out really well. You can see these rivets. They look just fine. And so here's how I ended up doing it. Part of this is if it sounds like a dumb idea, but it works, it's probably not a dumb idea. Um, I'm sorry that this PVC pipe is totally in the way, but you can see I've got this bucking bar right here and I've got something applying pressure uh, in the form of a spring, uh, which is in my pop riveter, pushing the bucking bar against that forward area, which has the rivet poking through. And you can see on this side, I can just kind of give the rivet a little poke 
and it resists. There's, there's just the right amount of pressure pushing back. And so I'm doing exactly what you think I am. I'm using the pop rivet spring and the bucking bar and then riveting from the other side. And I just use the, use the uh, rivet gun here, give it a little push, make sure it's seated, burp, 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 and boom, you have a perfectly set rivet. It worked perfectly. I was shocked. I wish I could do the rest of the blade this way, but you can't. And there you go. There it is. It's completed. Uh, so now for my next trick, I'm going to be working on the fuel tank. Uh, I will have probably a small video discussing the differences between a slow build and a fast build, just results-wise, once I do have this fully done, because there are differences. Anyways, thanks, guys.